Jody Hildebrand, Ruby Frankie's business partner, has voluntarily rescinded her license to practice as a clinical mental health counselor in the state of Utah. It won't be long before Hildebrand and Frankie turn on each other. I have an update for you in regards to Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrand. Today, we'll be talking about the fact that Jody decided to surrender her license and what that actually means. Also, I want to show you what police found in Jody Hildebrandt's house after they searched it. They actually searched her house several times. We have a lot to cover today. Let's get started. Several news sources have reported Jody Hildebrandt agrees to give up counseling license amid child abuse charges. Both of these news articles don't give any details in regards to Jody giving up her license. They just say, she gave up her license to practice counseling in Utah following her arrest. By signing this, she agrees that her license to practice as a clinical mental health counselor in the state of Utah shall immediately be limited, meaning that the respondent shall not practice as a clinical mental health counselor in any way or manner until the allegations underlying the arrest and charges described above have been resolved. This does not mean she admits any wrongdoing. However, instead, what it means is that by signing this, and you can see her signature right here, she is actually voluntarily letting her license go until the case has been resolved. This is not the first time Jody has been unable to practice as a counselor in Utah. According to JodyHildebrandt.com, her license were put on probation by the Utah Clinical Mental Health Board for 18 months, effective January 25th of 2012. Then her license were reinstated in March of 2013. And this probation period for Jody is in regards to Adam Paul Steed. I'm sure a lot of you have heard his story over on the Mormon Stories podcast. If you haven't heard that podcast, I recommend listening to it. It is five hours, but if you want to speed the video up, you can increase the playback speed by clicking on this icon in the top right hand corner of any YouTube video. Now let's listen to Adam Paul Steed talk about how Jody got her license taken away. And we had all these legal documents and then we had all these emails of what a therapist was doing that was completely unethical. Just completely unethical. So we turned him into Doppel. Doppel is Utah's division of professional licensing. They protect the public and enhance commerce through licensing and regulation. Because they had only got Jody for, for having a dual relationship and for sharing medical records, but they had seen all of the stuff that- Oh, because the word on the street is that she, she, she lost her license for violating your confidentiality, yeah. but it's much more than that. Oh, she did so much more. They, they doppel people that day told me she was guilty of multiple criminal offenses. Adam also goes on to say in this podcast that even though Jody's license were taken away at that time, she was still able to practice. She just changed how she practiced. Instead of a counselor, she became a life coach. We don't have to worry about that now. This story has gotten so much attention. I don't think anybody would go see Jody Hildebrandt. Plus, I don't think she's getting out of jail anytime soon. Now let's read some of the search warrant documentation. The personal property listed below was taken from the person of Jody Hildebrandt, date of birth 6-18-69, by virtue of a search warrant dated the 30th day of August of 2023. Scotch tape and saran wrap, miscellaneous papers and sticky notes, a journal, a bowl containing a red liquid with a metal spoon, a bandage and two white ankle socks, brown and white rope, a black book, brown and white rope with two handcuffs and three carabiners, miscellaneous paperwork in a blue folder. I'm curious about the red liquid. I wish they told us what that was. Maybe at the time they didn't know. I'm sure they know now, but this list of items that was taken from Jody Hildebrandt's house says a lot. KSL.com writes, in Jody Hildebrandt's bathroom, I located two used medical gauze dressings near cayenne pepper and honey paste. This observation adds to Miss Hildebrandt's knowledge of the abuse in the home. Miss Hildebrandt requested a lawyer and did not speak to us once given her charges. Miss Hildebrandt informed me that two young children should never be allowed around any other kids, officers wrote in the affidavit. Cayenne pepper. She was using cayenne pepper and this honey paste to dress the wounds on these children. This is a sick and twisted lady, and I really hope she rots in jail for what she's done to these kids. Plus all of her other victims that never got justice. 
who are now coming forward to speak out about this sick individual. Police wanted to go search Jody's house again, and this is everything they took from her house. Her iPhone and all of her computers. I'm surprised police didn't grab like cell phones and computers the first time they searched her house because technology has massive amounts of information on it. Imagine what they're finding on Jody's cell phone and computer. A news reporter stated that if forensic investigators find that Jody deleted evidence, she can be faced with additional charges. This is such good news. That if there is any evidence that uh, Jody Hildebrand or Ruby Frankie tried to delete any of these pictures from the phones, that rises to the level of obstruction of justice, second degree felony. So if that is on the, if there's any evidence that that happened, it would not be a surprise to see the Washington County attorney adding additional charges uh, on top of the child abuse charges that they're already facing. Just imagine the things they're finding on her computer and phone. The attorneys are trying to go through all of this information in regards to this case, and this is why the court date was pushed back. Attorneys said they needed more time to process and evaluate all of the information in this case, and the judge agreed, and that's why they pushed the case back. I covered this in a video. I'll link it right here if you haven't seen it. A lot of times, defendants, actually co-defendants like this, in his eyes, Avershed says that it's very frequent that they try to kind of turn on each other, that one will kind of start pointing fingers at the other, that they will claim, I had no idea what was going on at that house. But the cell phone GPS data from the cell phone towers, that actually could eliminate that kind of defense uh, for both uh, Frankie and Hildebrand, because Evershed says if the GPS data shows that they were constantly close to each other, visiting each other at each other's homes, constantly in contact with each other, that the likelihood of being able to say, I didn't know what was happening, uh, I didn't know that this alleged abuse was happening, uh, the likelihood of being able to use that defense really goes out the window. This just keeps getting better. There's so much evidence piled against both of these women. I think they'll find more evidence evidence on all of the electronic security cameras. So I definitely think we'll see more charges and I think they found more incriminating evidence. And I think that's one reason the bail hearing was delayed, which hopefully means more charges. I hope they throw as many charges at them as they can. They should have never reinstated Jody's license back in 2013. I wonder if the church will make some type of public announcement stating their position on this situation because they sent hundreds of people to Jody for counseling. I think they need to step up and take some accountability here as well. And we have Ruby here. And <laughs> Ruby is, is a part of the original 10 women that are being trained to become mental fitness trainers. I'll be posting weekly videos to give updates as this case continues. What are your thoughts on everything? Tell me in the comments. Thanks for watching YouTuber Headlines today. See you next time.